Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. My wife always asks me to start the radio show off by making the sign of the cross in Hawaiian. Makeanoa, kekeki, ameikeohana hemalele, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Lord bless us today as we talk to um, someone that the kind of like the 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 the, the waves kind of washed upon the shore here in Waikiki. We met each other going out uh, after uh, uh, going to uh, daily mass in the church right next to my home here in Waikiki. We have our, our guest, Captain John Lewis. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. <clears throat> I have to let everybody know that my new book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, is out. Sophia Publishing has, has, has released it. So we're asking you, <clears throat> mama bears, we're talking to you right now, you fierce mama bears, please go to Amazon or to our website or to Sophia Publishing or to any Catholic bookstore, or Barnes & Noble store, wherever you want to go. Get this book and, and get it to the men in your, in your lives. And also I think it's a good book actually for you to read too, especially for your daughters uh, that are coming of age that may uh, help them understand what a real man is. Uh, we love it for fathers to read this with their sons. It really gives them traction and conversation with them. The book is meant to be kind of a a father speaking to a son or brothers talking to brothers. So it's kind of just gritty. I, I call it grit and grace kind of combined. Um, so it's just practical wisdom, but it gets it gets really gritty and very real. So in this day and age when there's so much confusion about what a man is, you know, the root word for man, for virtue, the word for, for man in Latin is ver. And the root word for virtue is, of course, is, is man. So we're just challenging men to be men. And so please check out my book, 12 Rules for Manliness. Where have all the cowboys gone? So our guest today is John Lewis. It's so funny. Uh, John and I bumped into each other at, at, uh, after daily mass here in Waikiki. And I just thought, this is a Holy Spirit action plan moment. And almost ever since that, I've been trying to get him on my show. We just keep missing each other. Captain John Lewis coming to us from Hong Kong. Aloha, John. Aloha, Bear. Thanks for having me on. It's so cool to meet someone who's like boots on the ground like me, you know, uh, lo love, loving, love men that are stepping up to the front lines. You've been uh, really involved, uh, you're involved at the parish level, teaching confirmation classes and, and teaching uh, even some adult ca uh, classes. You've got a couple really cool books out, The Journey with Joseph. And I love your, your coloring book for children that is so perfect for right now, the the um, my first 12 Holy Communions. Uh, but first, before we get to start talking about that, I just want to get to know you. We really never had that chance to have that cup of coffee. First of all, how did we meet? Tell people how we how we met. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, my first flight to Hawaii, uh, I was so excited, so stoked about that. And then there's this church, like just two minutes from my hotel, St. Augustine by the Sea or something like yes, that. Yes, uh-huh. Yeah. And I met you and your wife, Cindy, on the sidewalk. And, you know, we were... Uh, kind of felt like Martin Luther, like knocking on the door, the door was closed and we were like, hey, is there gonna be mass today? And you're like, hey, I go to I go to church here, it should be. Um, did you ever find out why they didn't have mass that morning? I don't, well, that, it, was, it, was it around the COVID time? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, uh, I think that was it. It, it was uh, one of those things where, you know, during COVID everything's uh, unknown. So yeah. I just went and showed up and yeah. Yeah, we, 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 we got in the know. habit of going down there where you and I bumped into each other and just praying the rosary every day, praying that the door would be opened. And then eventually yeah. they opened us. They, 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 they began to have mass irregularly, but there was a side, kind of a side door that you had a secret side door. You needed to know how to get in. But, um, but yeah, it was, it was really a, a really gnarly time. Wasn't it right, right around that time? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it was, uh, it was such a grace to meet you that day. And, uh, you know, living in Hong Kong, it's always cool to meet some fellow Americans so I can just simply speak American. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. So I, I want to I want to dig into this thing because uh, you have a, I believe, a Southern Baptist background. Yes. Yeah, I was the correct type of Baptist. That is correct. The Southern Baptist. Well, and then and we're going to talk about your conversion story. But I went to Baylor University as a young. Uh, uh, I was raised Catholic. 
and I was just happy to be living in Waco, Texas. I moved there from Santa Cruz, California, a surfer boy, moved to the heart mm -hmm. of Texas. And I went to Baylor, and I met just so many beautiful, beautiful Christians there. And uh, um, I had my con real deep conversion experience to the Lord there uh, through the Catholic Church. But it was a lot of it was inspired by seeing their, their fervent love and personal relationship that they had with with the Lord, and I'm still great friends with all my great, uh, all the great Christians there uh, at Baylor. You know, and I just, I just feel, you know, that that uh, as a Catholic, it's so beautiful. We have the fullness of the faith, but nowadays we need to stand together. All of us Christians need to stand together because we got to face whatever's happening coming down the pike. You know, together. But tell us about your story as a Southern Baptist. And by the way, my wife was too. Oh wow! So, yeah, so so wow. t so tell us about your your journey towards uh, this deeper walk with the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> so that's so funny. I didn't know that. So three former Baptists met on the sidewalk in Hawaii. Well, I wasn't a uh, Baptist, but I went to a Baptist. But I went to the Notre Dame of of Southern Baptists, right, Baylor. So what what were you then? I was raised Catholic. Baptist? I was raised Catholic. But, but then I, you kind of got away from it for a while. And no, you became, well, well no. no. I mean, I was raised Catholic, but when I was at Baylor. Um, I, I, I just happened to go there because I was living in that same town. And uh, I met so okay. many wonderful uh, uh, Christians, but I actually had uh, uh, was involved in the Wild West days of the Catholic Charismatic Renewal, and that's where I really had my encounter with Christ was there. Oh, but this isn't cool. about me. Let's talk about you. So yeah. tell, talk, yeah. tell, tell us about well, you. I'm, I'm boring. I'd rather talk about you, Bear. But uh, So what was the question? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you were raised Southern Baptist, and then how yeah. in the world did you become a Catholic? So, yeah, I was raised Southern Baptist. In fact, my grandfather on my mom, on my dad's side, my paternal grandfather was a Baptist minister. Um, so, um, yeah, the, the way that story goes is as God's providence and sense of humor would have it, I met my wife-to-be, Irene, at a country western bar in Missouri. And she's from Mexico, of <laughs> course. Uh, and being from Mexico on a student exchange program at the university there in uh, Warrensburg, Missouri, uh, we met at a country bar called No Place. And so, you know, where did you guys either, where did you guys meet? No Place. No, yeah, really. No where place. did you meet? No Place. <laughs> yeah, and it's fun because you know if you're you know a young kid going there, like I was like what nineteen twenty, and your parents back home who are you know trying to hope that you're getting some kind of education, say, where'd you go tonight? Uh, no place. <laughs> well, you know, we had a better one than that at Baylor. We had a, uh, some of the local guys, I think it's Baylor grad students, they opened up a little bar near Baylor. Of course, it's kind of a dry area, right? That's Southern Baptist. They, they called it the library. So where are you going? Oh, I'm going oh, to the nice. library. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look like you're in a library now, Bear. <laughs> yeah, so, I am. I am. And you do too. I, lo I love all the books behind you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, okay. So, yeah, I met my wife at this country western bar. And, um, you know, she did the Texas two-step right into my heart. Mm -hmm. And you know, as they say, the rest is history. But during our engagement time, when we started to hear the wedding bells, um, one thing I knew for sure, because unfortunately my mom and dad divorced when I was like one year old, uh, one thing I saw, you know, there's good and bad things that come out of divorce. One good thing is I learned what not to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so when my wife and I were to get married, I was like, divorce is not even a word in our vocabulary. So if we do this, I'm only going to do it once. And one thing I know that we would argue about is religion, because my mom and dad and, you know, their spouses have argued about that. So let's try to get on the same page. You know, we agreed that, you know, God exists, Jesus saves. You should go to church, even though neither one of us were. But I figured maybe once we have kids, we hopefully will be going to church by then. So anyway... Uh, we agreed to look into our differences. Uh, she didn't. I did. Uh, and at the time, she was living. She was back in Mexico City, and I was living in uh, Manhattan, Kansas, the little <laughs> apple, yeah, yeah, uh, the flying little FedEx apple. freight. Um, uh, but no, that's not true. Back then, I was flying UPS freight. So I was flying UPS freight uh, to Kansas City every night. And so I went to the church. I went to the uh, library. Uh, to get some dirt on the Catholic Church. Oh, because so she I was could, raised Catholic. Uh, okay, so she was yeah, raised yeah. Catholic. Okay. And as you know, any just average American, I knew that the Catholics were just wrong. They're just some kind of crazy fish-eating, bingo-playing cult. So I went to the library to get some research, and uh, and I apologize. It's like 4.30 a.m. here, so my I'm still trying to wake up here. You can so have another I'm cup still, of coffee. Take another cup. Yeah, I'm stumbling over my words. I hope that's not tea in that cup. It better be coffee. It's... 
it it is actually Hong Kong milk tea. <laughs> I knew you were in Hong Kong, that British influence of the tea, but I'll still consider you a real man. Thank you, thank you. We're here virtually. Ver is for men and virtually, huh? Yeah, that's right, so, that's right. So basically, I went to the library to get some ammunition so I could, you know, shoot holes in the Catholic Church so she could become a Baptist. Uh, I was raised Baptist. However, then my mom saw the light and took us one Sunday to an Assembly of God church. Um, and then, you know, later in high school, I was dating a girl. She was non-denominational Christian, so I went there. And so then, by the time I got to university, I was a non-denominational Christian, uh, and I saw that, you know, denominations are really man-made. But in okay, university— Okay, 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 let's take a break. we got to break away. So I like what you just said. Yeah, we know that denominations are just really man-made. Well, there's some truth to, truth to that. Um, once Martin Luther did his, did his thing, there were a lot of man-made denominations that came out of— came out of that 50,000 is what I've heard and then you just say well let's not call it a dom denomination let's just call it non-denomination um, but well, I want to talk with you more about about this after this break we're talking with John Lewis he's a Hong Kong pilot for a for a pri he pl flies private jets for people and he lives there in Hong Kong and he's a, the author of a new book journey with Joseph where can they find this book how can they how can they get this book we're gonna, we're gonna be digging into it more in a little bit what's your YouTube yeah, channel uh, easiest way would be on Amazon. Uh, mm. You can get this or any uh, or any fine uh, Christian bookstore near you. I would like to say, hopefully, um, YouTube okay. channel is Josephology. So you can just go to Josephology, and maybe you can just link that below. Okay, sounds good. All right, well, th this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bears Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion? Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, and you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. My, my co-adventure guy today is Captain John Lewis. He's a private pilot. Uh, he, he flies private, air, private jets out of Hong Kong, which must just be really interesting. I've always been so fascinated with that, with that town. And uh, I, I read the James Clavell novels back in the day. Uh, I think it was the Shogun on Japan, and I think it was King Rad or Noble House out of Hong Kong, and I'd say, what a, what a crazy place. But you live and work there and, uh, and have these really cool books. There's this Journey with Joseph, uh, and, and then you also have a beautiful a coloring book, which I thought, I don't want to look at that. And I looked at it, this is just really engaging for people's children to use. Uh, uh, you know, uh, it, it teaches them so much, but it's full of little games and things too. But we're talking with John Lewis. Uh, he, um, 
about really his conversion experience. So you, you went to the library. That's what pe when people used to go to the library. And you're trying to dig up yeah. dirt, dirt on the Catholic Church so that the woman you want to marry won't be, will, will change from Catholicism to becoming a, a non-denominational Christian, I think, is what you're aiming for. Yeah, exactly. And so while I was there, Bear, um, you know, I thought I'll just go to the, the Reformation, read about uh, Luther's 95 Thesis. So I started looking at that. And it wasn't anything like I thought it would be about. I thought it would be, you know, don't worship Mary, don't play bingo, and don't eat fish on Friday. It wasn't anything about that. It was like indulgences. And it got a bit, you know, uh, theological. So I, I was sitting there in the Christian section. So then I saw this other book. It said The First Christians. Oh, that's interesting. So I opened it up. Just the page I opened to happened to be on a guy named Ignatius of Antioch. Mm. And he was talking about this E-word called Eucharist. And I was like, the, the Eucharist? What, what yeah, is I that? remember. Yeah, I remember. St. Ignatius was like, what, around 120 or something like that A.D.? So Yeah, 107 A.D. Yeah, he, so he really. He was a pupil of John, my, one of my patron saints. He was, he was the student of you know St. John the Apostle, which I didn't know at the time. But uh, so I went over to that ginormous dictionary that, you know, every library has and cracked it open to the E section, got down to the Eucharist, and it said, Lord's Supper, Holy Communion, breaking the bread. I'm like, what? But so then I go back and read again what Ignatius said, and Ignatius said, only the heretics abstain from the Eucharist and from prayer. I was like, wait a minute, Iggy, you call me a, you, you call me a heretic? So, uh, so right in that moment, I knew that the first Christians took the Lord's Supper really seriously. And, it's, and, and the definition is a little bit more beyond what that, that library book said. It, the Eucharist is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and you know, it, somewhere in there, it footnoted John 6. And by that time, game yeah. was over. I read, I read John game 6. Game over. And, and, you know, I was like, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life within you. And he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise him up on the but, last but, but, day. But, but wait, 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 wait. That verse is obviously just meant kind of, I don't know, kind of like allegorically or something, you know. Um, I'm sure Jesus later on when they had the, the, the cancel culture decided they were all going to leave him, he must have corrected himself, but he didn't, you know, because it said they were, they all were stunned by it and and thousands, he had thousands of followers, and they all left him. So he didn't say, well, wait a minute, you misunderstood. What I really meant was this. He actually <laughs> really meant, unless you eat of my body and drink of my blood. You know, and, and Cindy, my wife, had a really cool insight the other day. We were reading Genesis, and she said, in the Genesis story, God said, don't eat of that tree. But in the New Testament, in John 6, he said, you must eat of this. One was, don't eat, now, now you must and so pretty dramatic that, that as a Southern Baptist, and you know you're so saying, I'm, gonna, I'm a Bible-believing Christian, I'm going to believe whatever the Bible says, and then you encounter John 6. Yeah, so as a Bible-believing Baptist, I just took it for face value. I mean, he meant what he said. Uh, so it was a moment of grace where I just believed. And I was like, wow, this is real? I never, you know, Brother Ed never preached about this in church that I remember John 6. So I kind of got mad that, you know, they were like hiding John 6 from me as I was growing up as a Protestant. We never talked about John 6. I was like, what? This is in here? That's crazy. So, yeah, I started doing my research, and then I realized if I'm going to be like the early Christians, I've got to take the Lord's Supper seriously. So I start, as any Protestant would do, start church shopping. So one Sunday, you know, I went to the Lutheran church. And it looked, you know, pretty cool and everything. They did not have communion that Sunday. So I never went back because I also read that the early Christians had it every Sunday. So then I went to an Anglican church or Episcopalian. And afterwards, they had this universal sacrament called coffee and donuts. So I went to <laughs> coffee and donuts. And, and because dur during the church service, I was like, dude, this is so old. Like, I feel like, you know, King Arthur is going to pop out of the closet somewhere here. Uh, everything was gold and rails, and for an old Baptist, this was like, wow, this looks Catholic it's to a, me. It's, it's a culture so, shock. Yeah. So there was a lady after after the church service, and she said, oh, uh, where are you from? And I told her, and hey, my fiance is Catholic, and we're looking for you know, a church after we get married. And he said, oh, this is perfect, because this is, you know, this is like the Via Medea. This is not Catholic and not really Protestant. It's right in between. And uh, she said, don't move. Let me go get the church historian who'll come over. So she went and got this older guy, and he came over, and he explained, you know, the, how the church started. Kind of gnarly said, <laughs> how it started. Yeah, so I said, uh, 
So basically, King Henry VIII, your church started because of divorce? And he said, well, yeah, I guess you could put it that way. And I said, okay, see you later. Uh, and everyone back there, because, you know, as a child of divorce, I know that, you know, divorce is, is not a good reason to start a whole new church. Uh, so then the last church on my list was the Catholic Church. So I went there, you know, opposite of Luther. I knocked on the door and see if I could get in and uh, said, hey, you're uh, Father so-and-so. Um, so I just went right to the point, of, as any Baptist would, and I said, hey, you know, I believe we're saved by faith, and uh, you guys understand you're saved by works? Is this correct? You know, and he says, no, we believe it's both. I was like, both? It just like hit me between the eyes. I never thought about both. And then, you know, he got out his Bible, and he opened up like what? Matthew 25. Yeah, got out crazy. of a Bible, what? Yeah, and he said, here, uh, turn with me, please, to Matthew 25. And he says, you know, right here it says, you know, it's not those who say, Lord, Lord, but those who do the will of the Father. And then, you know, the end, I'll separate the sheep and the goats. Um, so I was like, oh, wow. I never saw that part either. Brother never brother never taught that part either. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 but, that part either. So, so he gave me the catechism, and he says, start at the back, look in the index, find a topic you like, read about it, come back anytime, and ask more questions. I was like, okay, yeah, I'll prove you guys wrong. Okay, so I went home, started looking at it. My first discovery was like, oh, this is really Bible-based. Wow, the... So finally, I had to conclude that these these guys are Christians too. I I, did, I was kind of iffy, like you know, I just knew it was some weird cult. It's like, man, these guys are Christians. The more I read, I was starting. Then I started getting nervous. I was like, uh oh, everything is making way too much sense. It's all biblical. Okay, I got to find one loophole because I don't want to become Catholic. Yeah, it's kind of like Saint Augustine calls it the slippery slope. Yeah. So then, you know, like 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 any any convert, you know, uh, who stumbles into the <laughs> and reveals his fathers, it's just like if you're intellectually honest, it, you're gonna have to become Catholic. I mean, it's just just no way around it. So I I thought Mary, uh, happy birthday, mother. I thought she would be the one that would keep me out of the church. But you know, after I read the chapter on Mary, it was like she's the icing on the cake. It's like wow, they don't worship Mary. They love her like mom you know she's the mother of jesus and you know if jesus is your brother then mary is your mother so it's like pretty simple right um so yeah so then i told my wife through email this is when you know chat online chat was just coming out that's how old we are mm -hmm. um and i told her wait hold the phone sweetie because she was ready to become baptist um and we actually in mexico city we went and looked at a baptist church and she'd never been in one and we went and knocked on the door uh, next door and they went and unlocked it and it was like so you know closed where she's like oh my church is always open and there's like a light on and it feels warm and in here it just feels empty like a warehouse like there's no like, eucharist yeah. the eucharist isn't and i there. didn't know yeah exactly that's what it was the eucharist wasn't there so um so anyway yeah i became catholic and um turns out that my wife became my sponsor at confirmation because father mel wasn't able to because it snowed and then the bishop wasn't able to come, so then Father Mel had to stand for the bishop for the confirmation. So then my wife became my sponsor. Um, so yeah, so that's uh, my story. The short version is uh, grace and truth. That's why I became Catholic. It's so beautiful. Um, and we love our, our non-Catholic brothers and sisters. Um, I feel so fortunate. You know, I, 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 if you have Jesus in your heart, if you've been baptized and have Jesus in your heart, then you have all of God. I mean, you either have God in you or you don't. But the but so you have the fullness of the Lord, but not necessarily the fullness of the faith, and the sacramental graces, and to be informed in for, and formed by the clarity of, of Catholic teaching. I have a friend who was who was raised Catholic and left the church uh, when he was in high school, and is a beautiful Protestant minister now. And when I gave him the catechism to read, I said, what was it that struck you the most about the catechism? And he said, the humility of it, which I thought was so interesting because it's, it's just presenting thoughts uh, and then for you to discern for yourself. But it's so rich because there's the, you know, I, I was a Catholic revert and I came back uh, reading Stephen Ray's book, Crossing the Tiber, um, and, then, and then reading uh, Justin Martyr's you know, letter to the emperor on the on the on the Eucharist, and understanding the primitive church, 
but um, I, I found that in, in, the, the, in the and then reading through the catechism and like this is absolutely makes total sense to me it's so often when I'm listening to Protestant teaching I'm, I find myself uh, you know threading my way through it this is good this isn't good this sounds right that doesn't sound right but when you're listening to genuine Catholic teaching it just has this aha yes that makes that makes sense to me. We're talking with Captain John Lewis. He's the he's the captain. Uh, he flies private jets, lives in Hong Kong with his beautiful wife and uh, children. And uh, we're going to come back and talk with him more about uh, some of the books he's written. The one we're going to talk about next is Journey with Joseph. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is Dan Laboon Markham with another episode of Country Up broken places. Jesus calls us to all look for broken people and broken places, because he did. And that means Christians must be a people of what the Old Testament calls shalom, that is, peacemakers. In the Bible, shalom is more than bringing a ceasefire to warn people. Shalom means to bring complete wholeness, well-being, and harmony into all situations in life. Called to places where things are busted up to bring shalom is a serious assignment. Some folks are afeard of broken places, like at the Gospel Mission, where I minister from time to time. Some folks often run away from brokenness, like those with uh, physical disabilities, mental illnesses, or addictions. Yep, hard stuff, partner. We learn in Chapter 3 of Genesis that sin brought about brokenness within ourselves and our relationship with God, brokenness between each other, and with our environment. Yep. As his people of Shalom, we are called to reflect him by bringing wholeness to broken people, places, and things. And we've got a mighty fine toolkit when we stop and take an inventory, like a shovel to dig out another's car stuck in the mud, repentance and forgiveness to make things right, compassion that remains bedside a person on his or her deathbed, saw and hammer to build a ramp for a wheelchair-bound neighbor, sharing the love and the saving grace of Christ with a sinful, bound-up soul. But it takes more than inventory in our toolkit. Got to have, number one, a desire to look for brokenness, a number two, a willingness to respond to such things, and number three, the commitment to see things through, turning brokenness into wholeness. Blessed are the peacemakers. As such, Jesus said we would prove we are God's daughters and sons. This is Daniel LaBoon Markham at CountryUp.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at DeepAdventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos, Plus, at DeepAdventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at DeepAdventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak Adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to let you guys know Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak is now available to you uh, on Prime Video. I like, at least it should be by the time this airs. But it's airing right now also on EWTN. We're so stoked about it. 11 brand new episodes of our motorcycle TV show, all filmed in Hawaii. 
And uh, it's a great, it's just a great way for you to introduce people to, you know, so many men we know have become con- converted to the Lord and then to, to, to becoming Catholic by walking by and seeing this TV show with guys riding motorcycles and then watching it. And then all of a sudden they realize, oh, these guys are talking about Jesus. Oh, these guys are talking about the Catholic Church. And so it's such a great evangelistic tool. But if you really want to really get access to the show, the best way to do it is go to deepadventure.com and either become a mama bear or become a member of the man cave. And then you get access to, I have about 250 uh, 15-minute teachings that I did down by the beach uh, going through the entire catechism line by line. You get access to about 350 or 400 of our radio shows, the video version of it. And you get access to all of the Long Ride Home TV series, all 33 episodes. So you can, uh, it's secret links, but you can show it, uh, you can link into YouTube and show it to your family and friends. Um, only, only members have access to these links. And, uh, and, you, and use, uh, use those in your evangelistic efforts with your family. So uh, go, go to deepadventure.com, become a member of the, lo- of, the, of, the, uh, of the Mama Bears, our fierce Mama Bears, or become a member of... Uh, the man cave in the school of man in this we're talking with J- captain john lewis i met john outside of uh the catholic church we couldn't get in the doors the front doors were locked it was right during covid and so uh um cindy and i began to just pray there with a friend of ours chris Goki, every morning uh the rosary asking the lord to open those doors up again but because of that we met john and uh, i knew right away i wanted to have on have him on my show so uh, captain john lewis welcome back to the bear Wozniak adventure Hey, thank you, Bear. It's good to be back, and it's cool that since it's Mama Mary's birthday, the Rosary, Mary's mm-hmm. Rosary, brought us together. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's true. That's true. Um, you know, Mary always it always confused me too. Long into my, you know, when I was a when I was a young Catholic, um, I had I had a love for her, I guess. But then, as I as I at the age of nineteen, had a deep conversion to the Lord. I mean, I. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and then I just didn't understand Mary. Like, if I'm going to focus on Mary, I'm taking something away from God. And uh, and I said, well, Lord, I don't understand this. And I wasn't against Mary. In fact, I would defend her when people would say that we worshipped her and stuff. But honestly, I just put Mary on the shelf for many years, for decades. And then when I returned to the Catholic Church, and I began to read, there's just so few lines about Mary, too. But once you unpack those words about Mary... You begin to really understand, you know, who she is and our relationship with her. If Jesus was formed in her, and she and she raised Jesus, and as Christians we're 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 members of the body of Christ, you know, as early church fathers say, we've been divinized. Um, then Mary, I'm being formed in Mary also. And where I really came to know Mary, John, was um, in the in in the weapon, in the rosary. Uh, you know, I, I found that when I went, if I wanted to do spiritual warfare, I went, I went to the rosary. It was so interesting. If I wanted to do intercessory prayer, I went to the rosary. And I found when I was traveling with Father Don Calloway in Israel, his mother was with him. And uh, I found that, there you go, he's got the rosary right there. There's the weapon. I found that whenever I wanted to talk to, you know, when, when, when there was a need, we would, we would ask his mother, and his mother would just be scrambling around doing all kinds of stuff that Father Don was kind of, I don't know how to say it, but um, he, he, um, she was like our intercessor in a way for, for what yeah. we needed. But also he said to us, what, are, what, if, what if you guys came up here and just my mother's right next to me and you just ignored her? Wouldn't I take offense as, as her son that you treat my mom with that sort of disdain and disregard? And so we, we in, as Catholics, we don't worship Mary, but we do, we do love her and are devoted to her and we're thankful for her. So, so then you, so then Let's let's fast forward then. So then you became a Catholic convert, and uh, and and before we get to the book though, then you began to be involved in teaching confirmation classes and was it RCIA? Oh, you adult. Yeah, yeah. So um, so with that in mind, just real quick before we move on, like you mentioned, yeah. our Mary. You know, and when I became Catholic, you know, I discovered some great saints like Saint Maximilian Colby, Saint Louis de Montfort. Mm-hmm. Um, as it's Mary's birthday, um, I have a little trivia. Who is the greatest Marian saint, in your opinion? Saint Joseph. Yes. Did I get it right? <laughs> you're the first person. <laughs> Maybe I didn't set that up correctly. No, but you're the first give me some credit. Right. Everyone always says, you know, oh, uh, Saint Max. No, no, Saint Louis de Montfort. 
No, it's St. Joseph, you know, he, humble he, little St. Joseph that you don't hear much about. He so, dug, yeah, on, he dug he on her, right? He loved her. He was he, devoted he to her. He loved Mary more than anybody. Mm. So, uh, yeah. Wow. Good job, Barry. Well, then, well, then <laughs> that leads right into this book, um, The Journey Journey with Joseph. It's just to tell us about this book and, and give us some of the insights from it. Well, um, this book, which on the back at the top here, it's got a... Uh, you know, book blurb by Father you got you got some Apple serious endorsements. I've heard of you know. I don't know if you want some surfer guy to endorse your book, but if you do, you got Reverend Donald Co- Don Calloway right at the top endorsing your book. That's pretty good. Yeah, I couldn't believe that. Um, I mean, it's just it's just so funny. You know, it's like this humble little book, and then like, wow, he really liked it. So that told me that hey, I, I must have been on the right page when I was writing this. Um, and actually, I even had Father Calloway on. Uh, my show, the little carpenter shop, we call it Cup of Joe. Hey, I want to be. Uh, I want to be on your show. Well, I want you on the show. As we were talking about in the break, yeah, I want to, you know, interview you. What is it called? A little cup of things. Joe. What is it called? It's it's called Cup of Joe, and it's if you go to Josephology YouTube channel, you can see the playlist Cup of Joe, and I have Father Callaway on there, and all everyone, you know that. Love St. Joseph's written books about St. Joseph. I've tried to have him on my show. So what, that a I can learn more what a great about name. What a great name. Joseph. What a great and, name. Yeah. Uh, you know, the funniest thing was people don't watch some of the videos that they should. Like Father Calloway's uh, interview, we had like 7,000 people. Uh, but then other ones that are like like Dr. Mark Miravalli. Oh, I love uh, him. Mike, yeah. And, uh, you know, some of these heavyweights, you know, people are going to look at the, the staircase of Santa Fe. Instead, and there's like seventy six thousand views on the staircase. I'm like, why are people looking at a staircase? Did, did you have anyway. Did you have Mark Doctor Miravel on your show? Oh yeah, he's awesome. He's all. He's yeah. a great Joseph. All- I mean, yeah, I, and he, Mariologist too. Yeah, the whole thing. Like, I was, I, I was, I, I took one of his classes. So I'm doing online masters at. Oh, you want me to tell you something cool about that? Um, yeah. I was at, I was actually at a, at a seminar once that he was speaking. And he said, now, I don't understand all, why the Marian visits tend to be about 28 years apart. And I raised my hand and said, I do. And he's like, what? What, what, what? Why do you think it's 28 years apart? And I go, well, you know where the symbol of Mary, where she's standing over the moon, right? Um, and, and her feet are cru- were crushing Satan. As a surfer, I know that a lunar cycle, a full lunar cycle is 28 years. Oh, wow. And as surfers, we tend to have, you know, 28 days is the, is the monthly lunar cycle. Um, and we know as surfers that we either hold our, our surf contest on an extreme tide or on a low tide. In other words, the, 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 let me put it this way. The tidal swings are most dramatic every 28 days uh, and every 14 days, right? So the, when it's the new moon and the full moon uh, is when the extreme tides are. So if you, if you have your contest when it's low tide, t- there tend to be longer rides. But if you started at low tide, and the tide's starting to come in, it gives the waves a little push, too, so they tend to be better waves. And I said, but 28 years is the full lunar cycle. I knew someone once who surfed every day for a full lunar cycle, and that that, that, that was the reason. And so I don't know. And he said, oh, I dig on that. He, like, he, 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 he totally dug it. So that's kind of cool. Have, have, have Mark, Dr. Mark Miravalla, you know, uh, Jim Caviezel's, I think, close friend and Mother Angelica's confessor. That's pretty cool to have him, you know, yeah. endorse that, you know, or uh, affirm it. At least be curious about it. Now I've wasted all of our time. So let's talk to more about uh, about your book, Joseph. I'm sorry. So so basically, the way my my little book came about is um, a dear friend of ours, Father Jojo, which is short for Joseph. He's from India, and here in Hong Kong, you know, it was the year of Saint Joseph. Uh, it was actually funny enough on Mama Mary's birthday. Uh, so he had this contest where people could write songs, write a new song. Um, about St. Joseph and give it to Mama Mary on her birthday, September 8th. So he had a big deal at his parish. And my wife and I created this song uh, called I Stand in Silent Awe. Mm. And our song actually won, which no kidding. put us pink because uh, neither my wife nor I can, you know, whistle a tune or sing a note. Like when I sing, you know, windows break, so I'm pretty bad. But well, you know, the, uh, Bible really, says, the Bible says make a joyful noise, right? <laughs> so people like yeah, us. Yeah. Well, you know, my mom, you know, she said, if you can't sing well, at least sing loud. So that's pretty much me. But uh, anyway, yeah, we won this contest, uh, which was so beautiful. So many new songs came up that people created for St. Joseph on Mary's birthday. And at that uh, event, Father Jojo said, hey, John, look, here's a book that a parishioner wrote in Chinese on St. Joseph. Why don't you want write one on English? And I said, me? I said, no, Father, you should write it. You're the priest. 
He's like, well, no, we, we need a, uh, a layman's perspective. So I said, I don't know, Father, let me think about it. So he, every time he'd ask me, I, I came up with another way to say no. Uh, I said, I'm too busy. He said, oh, take your time. Um, oh, you, so you, any- you know what? You know what? We got to take a break. But you know what? The Holy Spirit asks busy people to do stuff because he, he knows he, they don't have any time to waste. <laughs> so they get things done. <laughs> We're talking with Captain John Lewis. He's the private. Uh, he flies private jets. He lives in Hong Kong with his wife and has a beautiful ministry in his new book that we're talking about his journey with Joseph. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak Adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Bear and Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. still listening i thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station while well, you asked for it here is more of the bear wasnick adventure aloha welcome back to the bear wasnick adventure we're talking with captain john lewis he flies private jets uh, living in hong kong and just has this beautiful joyful uh devotion to the lord uh a love for Mary and a love for Joseph. And this new book, Journey with Joseph, uh, is so beautiful. And then you have another book, T- My First Twelve Holy Communions, which is a coloring book for children. Uh, and I think it's so cool. Writing anything that's for children is very, very, they say it's harder than writing a novel because you have to make beautiful, it's a graphic, and you, know, you, have to, you have to make the point in very few sentences what you're trying to, r- trying to say. So now, so the Journey with Joseph, you know, have you ever seen that, there's a statue in Notre Dame uh, in, at the, the university. Um, after the football game, 30 minutes after the football game, mass starts. And you go to that chapel, and every, you're sitting on the floor. There's standing room. There's sitting room only, so to speak. But in there, there's a statue of Jesus, of Joseph reclining on Jesus at, on his, at his death. And Mary's there, and, G, and Joseph is there, and how tenderly Jesus and Mary loving loving Joseph. So, of course, we should love him, too. Tell us what, what about Joseph in, should inspire us, especially men. Well, I think Joseph, and I hope he's in your new book on manliness, um, because when it comes to being a real man, he is the greatest man, period. He's the greatest male saint who's ever walked the planet. And as you talked about, Barry, you put Mary kind of on the shelf. When I became Catholic, I embraced Mary right away. I was lucky in that regard. But I put Joseph on the shelf, as I think everybody does. Like, Joseph, yeah, he didn't say anything. You know, that's it. That's about all I know about Joseph. He was the strong, silent type. Super strong, super silent type. So, you know, I came across a quote from St. Teresa of Avila, who said, you know, St. Joseph's the secret weapon of the spiritual life. Go to him. And she's like, I double dog dare you. 
Um, nothing I've ever asked of St. Joseph has not been answered. So I was like, that's kind of weird. Like he never even said anything in scripture. How can you go to St. Joseph? So, you know, anything much more about that for 20 years until Father Jojo asked me to write this book. And this book was really, I can say it wasn't me, which is the best part. It was just really the Holy Spirit working through me, which those of you out there that say, oh, I can never do anything. If God can use me, he can use you way easier because um, I'm definitely not the best instrument. And the way this book came about is just basically after mass every day, you know, my wife and I would come home. We go to a pretty early mass. Uh, and I would just start writing. And the funny thing was like almost every mass was something related to St. Joseph, which is kind of weird, right? Uh, so I started seeing Joseph in different ways through scripture. Um, and to see Joseph, you have to see him like Mike Aquilina says in his amazing book. Love Mike. Where he talks about this art process called Karioscuro, where you have to look like in the shadows. So you use this art technique of mm. dark and light. And, mm. and there as a pilot, you would probably relate more to how, you know, at night we have to use our rods and days we use our cones. So if, if you want to look for traffic at nighttime, you kind of look off center a little bit. So you have to look a little bit off center to see Joseph. Wow. So you, you can learn about Joseph by reading the life of Christ, by reading the life of Mary. So he lived with him, right? So the best way is to look at Jesus. Everything that Jesus said was probably similar to what he was taught by Joseph. So when you start to think about this, it's pretty deep, actually. So the way Jesus broke bread, the way he said his prayers mm -hmm. was probably like dad, Joseph, like, like even still me when I pray, you know, I pray very much like my dad. And when we go visit my dad, you know, the boy's like, wow, dad, you, you pray like grandpa. <laughs> so, yeah, Interesting. You know. Yeah. Mike was on my yeah, show recently. Good. He said he was saying the same thing, how Christ, Jesus mannerisms. And, you know, like, think about it. He was raised by a guy that was probably a, you know, he was a technon. He was a builder. People like to say carpenter, but he, if you've been to Israel, you know, he probably worked with rock more than with, with wood. And what did Jesus do? He said, he, you know, he's using examples. You're, you're Peter, you're, you're the rock. You know, upon this rock, I'll build my church. You know, so these are things he learned from his dad. That he worked side by side with Joseph. Think about the grit that he learned by hanging out around Joseph. Exactly. So, yeah, you put it perfectly. Jesus learned his man-erisms from Joseph, and Joseph was the man. So, it, 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 you know, he's not this effeminate guy in, like, a little robe with, like, you know, manicured fingernails. No, he was buff. He was strong. Uh, oh, the, yeah. That I used to go to in Wichita, Kansas, has one of the best statues. Like, if you go to the cathedral in Wichita, Kansas, there's this ginormous statue of Joseph and Mary, and he's got like some major biceps. Dude, dude when you see the the, the oh. cover, uh, the the I think uh, the Father Don Calloway had a, I believe a statue commissioned, or maybe it was a paintings commission, but of a real powerful looking Joseph. And when you look at uh, in when, being with Father, Father Don in, in Israel, there's the the one of the hotels we stayed at in in Jerusalem. They have uh, there's two statues that are made out of the three dimensional image of the Shroud of Turin. You know, because it fell through his body, so it's it's actually three dimensional. And Jesus was ripped. You know, if you look at the look way the statue is, and 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 think about it. This is a very interesting thing for the men that are listening. Uh, Joseph, you know, the angels came and spoke to Mary, but once you see Joseph taking her her to him as his wife, then you see uh, that that God speaks to him in a dream. Take Mary. You know, there's danger. You know, so. So it was like there was he he took on the role of spiritual leadership, and now that those words of protection and guidance came to Joseph. Yeah. And not only did Mary submit to him as her husband, but Jesus said the Bible says Jesus submitted to Mary and Joseph and grew in stature be, before both God and man. So um, men, Joseph is a beautiful. Uh, affirmation and confirmation to you of what your role is as pr protector, not just physical protector, but spiritual protector and provider in your homes. Absolutely. And in my book, I've got actually one, one chapter is that he is, you know, the model husband. That's day 19. And then day 20, he's model of fathers. Um, mm. So he, for a man, uh, I mean, he. I think he is a fulfillment of the prophesi prophecy in Malachi, where you know, um, in the end times, um, you know, God will turn the hearts 
of fathers to their children and children to their fathers. And I think St. Joseph has showed up at just a time as this to help men to become real men again, to become the dads, to become the husbands that they're called to be. Uh, because we have a dearth of manliness nowadays. We have absentee fathers. You know, you can read even the secular books, Fatherless America, and look at all the ills of not having dad around physically or emotionally. And you can fill in the blank, look, everything bad. Look what, look, what happened, look what happened in Ireland when the dad stopped going to mass. You know, mass is something the ladies go to and the guys go to the pub. And ever since yeah. then, the, the, moral, the moral quality of that, of that country has just collapsed with, uh, with, uh, you know, the, with abortion and all of those things. You know, you're probably familiar with that statistic. I want the men, I want to just really encourage the men there. Yeah, you're not, you're not the holiest guy in the world. Maybe you cuss every now and then, I don't know. But, but, uh, but there's certain something, there's a certain grit that God has given you that your family needs. And there's a statistic that says that when a woman brings her children to mass, I maybe you heard this, bring your, uh, you know, a Christian woman brings her children to church without, without the father, about a little bit less than a third will stay in the faith. I bet it's even less now. But um, if the father, in the, uh, father uh, and the mother take the child, it's more like 75 or 80 percent stay in the faith. But if only the father takes them, it's almost identical to when the mother and the father take them. So fathers, um, I, know you're, I know you consider maybe being a, a, spending time with the Lord in prayer kind of a waste of time, but it's your most productive time. It's, in fact, the liturgy, the hour, which is a prayer that uh, all priests pray and deacons pray and, and holy uh, li- religious people pray and, and probably John, John prays too. Um, it, 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 liturgy means, mass liturgy means work, the work of the people. So do your work. If you want to be a productive man, do your work, take your children to mass. You've got one more uh, minute, John. Can you t- tell us, can you wrap, show us where, one quick message about Joseph and then where they can find, find the book? Um, I guess if you want to know what's unique about my book, um, it's a journey with Joseph, and each day you learn something new about Joseph. Like you learn that he actually was royal himself. He's in the line of King David, so he's actually you know the day one is like the little prince is born. Uh, we're talking with 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 John Lewis, uh, Captain John Lewis, the private pilot, uh, flies private jets, living in Hong Kong, and his new he's got a, a, a book called On Wings and Prayers. He's got the book on my first twelve communions and journey with joseph till next week may the breath of the holy spirit aloha you aloha thanks for listening to the bear wilding adventure find more manly conversation at the bear wilding deep adventure youtube channel subscribe and ring the bell